This is the unfiltered truth about entrepreneurship. Raw, no BS, no sugarcoating. Welcome to Entrepreneur Intel. I'm your host, Wes Matthews. Each episode, we'll learn from experienced founders and uncover the top 5% learnings that led to their success in all things personal, family, and business. This show is sponsored by Stealth Consulting, delivering clear marketing strategies, ROI, and no surprises. So I'm super excited for today's guest. Uh, introducing today's guest, so he's the founder and former CEO of Moose Jaw, uh, which made retail and e-commerce fun and was acquired by Walmart. Co-founder of CrowdRise, the largest fundraising platform for nonprofits in the U.S., and that was acquired by GoFundMe. He's currently the founder of Zek, a platform reinventing the board meeting process to make it more strategic and efficient. I'm really excited to dive in there. Uh, he's been an advisor to several companies, and this is probably my favorite one out of all your accolades. An honorable, an honorable mention for Beth Breakdance <laughs> using an old school cardboard mat. It's an ironic yeah. sense of humor. So welcome, Rob Wolf. Welcome. <laughs> Yeah, no, thank you so much. Yeah, the last one, my brother was actually a break dancer, and I have a great picture of him I, literally as a kid break dancing on a pad that I send to just about everyone to embarrass oh, him. Oh, that's awesome. Somewhere, yeah. uh, somewhere I read, like you, you claim your brother was like way smarter. He was like the smart. Right. Yeah, he is smarter. Yeah, he's smarter. He's the smarter brother. I would beat him in a fight in any sporting event out. So, Take me back, like Moose Jaw. Like, how, how did how did you get involved, and how did you have the idea to come up with this company? Yeah, so um, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life, and I was I was taking backpacking trips out of mostly school groups, and this is literally this is pre internet, and we would go on some pretty serious trips. I was working as a guide for a friend of mine who had a guide service, along with another friend of mine. And these kids, they needed real gear and there were, there were very few places to get it. So it sort of started off as a joke. We said, okay, let's, let's open a store. And we, we got really lucky for a couple of reasons. First, we, we opened a store, it was 1200 square feet, which is not much bigger than the room that I'm sitting in right now. So it was tiny in a town called Kego Harbor, which you may know, but the, the larger audience may not, a little town in Michigan. And, and at that time, it's hard to it's hard to even even think about it this way. People who bought this this kind of this kind of gear, they were actually going on a trip, right? So North Face, for example, when we started, did not make product for women. So if you think about those old those those North Face puffy jackets, right? If you were a woman and you wanted one of those, and and you were a typically a woman's medium, you were just buying a men's small. They North Face made one day pack. Now you can't walk around Michigan or Michigan State or any campus without seeing a million North Facebook bags, right? So we got really lucky with our timing. We also got lucky because we had no idea what we were doing. So when, yeah, I say this, people think I'm being hyperbolic, but I'm not. This is, these stories are true, that when people would come into our store, we, I didn't even know to say to them, can I help you? Like I was the kid who would not go to the mall with my mom. And when people would come in, I, I would say, do you want to go play home run derby in the parking lot? And we really had Home Run Derby set up in the parking lot and connecting with the customer in unique and interesting ways, which we did by accident. It wasn't a purposeful marketing campaign that resonated and people would use to come and hang out at our store and then stores. And so we had a ping pong table in, in our stores because I love playing ping pong, right? And it was fun. So we would do that once we realized that that was working, that engaging with the customer in unique ways was driving traffic and sales. Then we started doing it purposefully. But but at the beginning, we were doing it because we just wanted it to be fun. So how how old are you at this time? I was 21 when we started Moose Jaw. And what, what year, what, where's the internet in this? So, so we started Moose Jaw in 1992. We actually, um, we had our, our anniversary on Halloween. So we opened on Halloween in 92. Oh, wow. And, and then... Yeah, you know, I, I I used to think that we were really lucky because I was closer in age to the demographic that we wanted to embrace, so college kids. And I also love technology. So when the internet started to emerge, we were very, very early players. And that was also super helpful to us. I mean, we had moosejaw.com, but there's a whole story behind it. We started off as Moosejaw Online 
because Moose Jaw is actually a city in Canada okay. and a city owned the name moosejaw.com. We eventually bought it from them, which was a whole nother crazy story. But uh, we were we were doing that in 95, which was very early. So you're young in your 20s. Like, where do you go? Right. So the Internet comes out and, you know, you've got to buy a domain name and build a website and, yeah. and spin up an e-commerce. I mean, so that wasn't even in your vantage point when you started the company. Like, Internet didn't exist. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, again, I'm a big believer in luck. We got really lucky. I was working. We had a store at that time at, at Michigan State, and we had computer science kids working in our store, and they knew how to do this shit. So we just collaborated and built the first. I literally can remember one of the people they had a, uh, their family had a house in Gaylord. And I literally can picture perfectly exactly where I was sitting. We just, we went up north for a few days and designed the whole website, right? That's and awesome. and so it was, you know, we had no idea what we were doing and just figured it out as we went along. What happened from that point where you guys moved the company online? I mean, did you still have that same type of culture, like the ping pong, that attitude, or was it, no, we're gonna go shift our efforts online? No, it was, it was we were we very purposefully wanted to figure out how do we replicate this feeling and culture that we had in the stores to the internet. And so for us, we were doing things like blogging before there was a such word as blog. We were doing engagement before that was a buzzword. So for example, we were doing Moose Jaw catalogs very early. We never just chose the cover. We would always go out to our community and say, okay, we're deciding one of these six covers, which do you like the best? And, and we genuinely wanted our community's opinion. So again, again, once we realized that this was working, then we started doing all of that more intentionally. So you eventually ended up selling this business. What, what year did you sell? So we raised money in 2010 and we sold to Walmart in 2017. So we went I, th I think this this might be a little bit of believing my own bullshit, but I think sometimes sometimes people think Moose Jaw was this overnight success story. We really weren't. I mean, we we uh, we were and are grinders. So this is these stories. I mean, I have so many crazy stories that you wouldn't believe them. But when when we started MooseJaw dot com, okay, the we had an eight hundred number. Wherever I went, whatever store I worked at. I would literally call the phone company in the morning and say, point the 800 number to our gross point store. And when I went to the gross point store to work that day, everyone had to pick up the phone and say, Moose right? And, and people were taking orders in the store. And then when, when I would go home at night, and then my brother eventually took this over, we would literally bring the credit card machine home with us. We would point the 800 number to our house. So if, if you were calling Moose Jaw at two in the morning on a Saturday night, my brother was answering the phone in his bed, taking the order, pressing, pressing numbers into the credit card machine, sitting out by his bed. I mean, those are, those are real stories. That's awesome. Yeah, it was fun. So, I mean, it was hard. So 2010, so what was, wh or why did you end up, like, what was the race for capital at that point? Like what direction were we going to go? So we, we really, I, I really fell in love with e-commerce. Uh, I, I think we were, I love the stores. But I was so maniacal and obsessed with brand. And there was so much more control over the brand for us in e-commerce than in the stores. So if you picture, let's just say we're doing a promotion. Um, we, we, were, we did crazy stuff, but just for, a, for an easy example, um, free, get a, buy a Patagonia jacket and get a Patagonia water bottle, right? Which we would do sort of in partnership with Patagonia. In our stores, we would have to we would have to make signs, right? And we would have to send the sign to all the stores. The people at the stores would have to take the sign. They would have to put them up in the right place. They would they would have to take it down and put it away and not ruin the sign, so we could do it again. That never worked once ever. Like I don't know how retailers do. We were terrible at it. But for e for the internet for e commerce, it would they, those kind of campaigns were so much easier, right? It was all yeah. automated. So I fell in love with the internet. We wanted to raise money and find a partner who could help us do more retail expansion. So that was the primary catalyst to us raising money is we wanted to focus on the brand and e-commerce and really have someone else take over retail. 
So you sound like, as you talk about Moose Jaw, like I hear the passion. And at yeah, some point, did you it. sell all of it off to Walmart or like what, what led you to sell yes. Moose Jaw away? Like, yeah, I was, um, so I, at that time I was, I had started a second company called CrowdRise and I was on the board of Moose Jaw and, and was part-time there, but we had a different team running the company at the time and in, in Walmart made sense as a partner. They were trying to compete with Amazon at the time and they made a bunch of acquisitions. They bought Bonobos and they were actually awesome. Um, you know, I, I at the time said, listen, I, we're acquired by Walmart. I'm good. I'm, I'm going to be done. And, and they were a, an amazing partner. They were really good. Now, now Walmart has since sold Moose Shot of Dicks. Okay. Uh, and, and that's a different story altogether that I probably shouldn't get into, but Walmart was great. Yeah. Did you ever think in your mind and starting this company as Moose Jaw that you would end up partnering with, with Walmart? Fuck no. no. I mean, still to this day, you know what? This is, um, I mean, this is sort of, I, I don't know if this story will make sense, but I, um, I remember perfectly our first thousand dollar day. The very first day that we did a thousand dollars in sales in a day. And I couldn't believe it. Right. And I said to myself, I hope this feeling never goes away. It actually did. Right. That feeling went away. But even still today, if I'm at the airport in, in Denver or I was in, um, I was actually in Alabama, um, a few weeks ago and I saw a random person wear a moose jaw hat, that feeling has never gone away. I still can't believe it. So it's, uh, you know, it was, we worked really, really hard, but we, we tried to do something, uh, tried to do something special. So, so you had already shifted your day to day, so to speak, when we're not yes. Walmart. So did they, they approach you or were you actively looking to find a new partner? Uh, at Moose Yeah. Jaw? It was, it, it's a, it was more of a series of events, um, than, than it, which it usually yeah. is right. Nothing, nothing is usually so straightforward. Um, but it was a, it was a long chain of events. Led. So how do you segue from a moose jaw from a, a company like that to go into, you, you said cr crowd rise. Yeah. Crowd rise was our second company. So, um, crowd rise was a fundraising platform and we really wanted to have an impact and, and do something special or, or, or unique and try and raise money for cause, but we didn't want to do it in a normal way. We wanted to take these, these lessons from Moose Jaw and apply them to a new space. And if you think about the giving space in 2010, it, it was actually tactless to tell people how you gave back. Nobody did that. Nobody told anyone how they gave to charity. And now you can't scroll on social for more than 10 seconds without seeing how someone gives to cause. And I, I think we played a small role in that. So our goal was, and the very, the very same way that our playbook at Moose Jaw was, how do we make this fun, right? Backpackers and climbers take themselves very seriously. How do we make it fun? We took that to sort of the next level in the giving space. So to us, charity was defined as being burdensome and guilt-ridden. We wanted to flip it and make it fun and social. And the idea was that if you can actually get people to enjoy giving back, they'll do it more frequently and tell their friends about it. So we were really crazy. I mean, our, our slogan was, if you don't give back, no one will like you, which was very polarizing. I mean, the first organization we met with was American Cancer Society, and they, they literally laughed us out of the room. And then they said, we will never do this. Well, very lucky, five years later, when we became the conduit to the way younger people were giving back, then we, um, we became American Cancer Society's fundraising platform. So that really went full circle. But we, we, we worked really hard. And this is also, so this is 2010. So like web is still like, cause I got into website design development back in like 2006, 2009. And it still was really difficult to get really good software to get a good website done. So you're like first to the market on something like this. How did you start yeah. to piece together a team? Was it like people you knew or like, how did you, you know, have this vision and idea and actually make it come to fruition? So we, we actually, when we, when we had the idea, again, I, I said this before, I'm a big believer in luck. Um, we, I connected with a friend of mine who's an old friend of mine, her name's Shauna Robertson. So if you know all the Judd Apatow movies, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, Elf, Her Man, Meet the Past, 
she, these are her movies, right? And she's just, she's an old friend. And her boyfriend at the time was Edward Norton, the actor Edward Norton. And Edward was running yeah. the New York Marathon to raise money for one of his causes. And I ended up talking to Shauna about this idea to find a, a new way to, to encourage people to give back. And Edward grabbed the phone and said, hey, I'm running the New York Marathon for one of my causes. This, there is no way to crowdfund in, a, in a, a more modern approach to the space, a more fun approach to it. And so we collaborated on his, on his charity campaign. And I actually ended up, we ran, the, we ran the campaign together. I ended up running the marathon with him. And our goal was to raise $75,000. And through these crazy ideas, we ended up raising 1.2 million. Wow. And, and from that, we said, well, fuck, this is awesome. Let's take these lessons we learned from this small microsite that we built ourselves. And then we said, okay, let's build this for all charities to be able to use. And, and, and we, you know, we went out and, and hired people to help us do it. So at that time, the, is GoFundMe the, the giant in the room? I mean, they had the, the massive platform or? Not yet. That, that um, GoFundMe came a little bit later. So the difference between CrowdRise and GoFundMe and why we, why we were able to eventually merge with them is GoFundMe started off where that you would raise money for your friends in need, right? And, and you couldn't do that on CrowdRise. You could only raise money for American Cancer Society, Red Cross, UNICEF. I mean, there's 2 million US-based nonprofits. So any of those 2 million, you could raise money for, but you couldn't raise money for your friend. And that created pretty significant synergies between our two platforms. So I think it's interesting as an entrepreneur, like looking back with your experience with Moose Jaw and CrowdRise, could you repeat those processes today? Or is it like that, that time's passed with those specific companies? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think it would be really, really hard again in the, you think about the timing we had for both companies. It was, it was really, um, it was the right time for both of those companies. I mean, we're certainly hoping that we have the right time for our new company, Zach too, but I, I think it would be really challenging for a number of reasons to do the same thing we did today. So as an entrepreneur, was your goal always to create, create, get it to a point and then get out of the way? Or like how far through your journey do you like to take companies? I don't, you know, I, I don't know. I saw, um, and, and, and the following person is a friend. So I don't want, I hope he doesn't listen to this because I wouldn't want him to hear me say something nice about him. But I, I love the startup side. I love the, the stress of it. And, and I love building a brand. But I saw the CEO go, of Go, GoFundMe is a big company. Yep. And. I saw how the CEO of GoFundMe, he's no longer, he's not the CEO anymore. His name's Rob Solomon. And just saw the way he worked and the way he ran a bigger company. He was just better at it. Yeah. And, and I didn't really know that until I saw the way he operated. Um, so I, if we're lucky enough at our third company to be a, a big company, maybe I'm the right person to run it. But um, Rob would be, someone like Rob would be better at it. I just saw the way he worked. No, that's awesome. Good to have humility as a, as an entrepreneur to be like, Hey, I'm not the best person for this job. Well, we, we never, the moment any of us think we know what we're doing, we're all in big trouble, yeah. um, at our company. Right. So we're, we're really grinding it out and trying to figure it out as we go along. It's really cool. Your partners with that Norton. I, I, I've watched a ton of his movies and I actually use them as an example every now and again, cause I sold my last company and uh -huh. I would tell people, cause they're like, well, why'd you sell your company? And I go, do you remember that scene in fight club? I think it's Edward Norton's looking at that hotel that the guy set on fire and he's yeah. like, somebody came up to him. They're like, yeah, fight club. And he's like, I didn't create, like, this wasn't my mission to create this. And my company yeah. kind of transformed into something that I didn't create. And it was, it just got kind of weird, but I always remember the moment yeah, of that movie. Awesome. Um, so you guys sell that company to go fund me. Are you still active in that company at all? Are you on the board or? Not, no. So Edward is, I'm not, I mean, I'm still. I'm still friends with so many people who work there and, and I'm, uh, you know, you and I have talked about sports a little bit. I love sports and I love cause. So, um, you know, when I'm not working on Zek 10,000, 10,000 hours a week, those are the two things that I, I tend to engage in. So rarely does a day or certainly a few days go by where I'm not engaged in cause in some way. 
and therefore still connecting with the people at GoFundMe. And a lot of them worked at CrowdRise, so I'm still friends with them. How do you like, I, I probably already know the answer to this before I ask, but you've had two really great exits leading up to this point where you just mentioned, like, I'm working 10,000 hours. Like, you could probably stop working. Like, have, have you ever thought of that or have you actually tried to stop creating or like what, where, like, how, how has that impacted you? I mean, I, I, I really would, I would wish me upon no one. I, I hope I can stop at some point. Um, I'm a, I'm a terrible sleeper. I, I, not last night, last night I woke up in the middle of the night for entirely different reasons, but the night before, um, I literally, I woke up at four in the morning and had an idea and I was like, there's no chance I'm going back to bed. I just got started. I, I just, that was, so um, it, it's not, it's, it's, it's stressful. You know, I, I can't, I've never, I've never taken a nap in my entire life. So it, this leads you into Zach. And yes. Zach is a, to make board meetings more efficient, more productive, which I've actually been on the board meeting side. And when I saw you right. talking about Zach, I'm like, man, how much time did we spend on this really boring presentation? to then send it out, to then regurgitate what somebody could just look at and just look at themselves. Like, I, I just looked at that process sort of laughing because I'm like, it was com a complete waste of time on my end. You, you nailed it. I mean, we, um, we really did build Zach based on our own experience. So between Moose Jaw and CrowdRise, the shortest deck we ever sent to our board was 134 pages, wow. which is crazy, right? We had no idea what we were doing. Uh, we spent a hundred, 150 hours as a team on these presentations and they were bad. And then we would get into the meeting and quite literally, and we had these amazing sort of famous board members. I mean, one of our, one of our, our board members at, uh, at CrowdRise is now the U S ambassador to the Czech Republic. Right. I mean, we had some badasses on our board and we would get into the room and reread them on a 134 page deck that they had already read. Right. So, it was a waste of time for everyone. I genuinely thought that we were the only ones who were bad at it. It wasn't until after our companies were acquired and sort of got out there in the world that I realized this angst was universal and couldn't believe there wasn't a solution. So it was our, our, our team, I, I could tell the whole long story, but our team basically got back together to build Zach. And we started a couple of years ago. And so that's where we're spending uh, all our waking hours now. Do you have team members from Moose Jaw and CrowdRise? Yeah, so so my brother uh, and Edward Norton, the three of us started Zek together. And we have our, basically our COO and head of product is worked at both Moose Jaw and CrowdRise. Our head of sales was uh, our head of sales at CrowdRise and GoFundMe. The person who runs brand ran brand at CrowdRise and Moose Jaw. So it's, again, super, super lucky. We already sort of speak each other's languages and it, you know, can end each other's sentences from day one. Nobody had to learn all that. So is Zek then, is it, is it like a SaaS platform, like a month recurring yes. model for like, is it entrepreneurial companies? Is it mainly enterprise level companies or all the above or? Yeah, it's really any company that has a board and, and what was unexpected. It's so there's 2 million U.S. nonprofits. They are mandated to have board meetings. So let's just say at a minimum, they have four board meetings a year. So that's 8 million board meetings. And they're all bad, right? So we didn't expect nonprofit to also be a customer, but about a quarter of our customers are nonprofits. And that was totally unexpected. Wow. So systems built, what's the goal for Zach? Where, where, do, you, where do you go from here? What's the... You know, we're really trying to, and again, we're not, I don't want to pretend we're saving the world, but we, uh, we do think we're doing something transformational. I mean, literally, I am, I am certain that None of the work you do or, or your listeners, you're not signing um, documents with ink and sending a FedEx package with those little tabs anymore, right? You're using DocuSign. Yet for our board meetings, we insist on using slide decks, which were quite literally built pre-iPhone. I mean, go try to read a deck on your phone. You can't do it. It's impossible. Try to collaborate with it. It's impossible. So we're trying to modernize that process. In the, and this might be an unfair analogy, but for lack of a better one, in the same way that DocuSign has modernized the way we sign things. So that's what we're, we're trying to do and build a brand around it. So part of it is, again, there's this through line from Moose Shot to CrowdRise to Zach, we think, where we're in this space that is miserable, 
right? There was nothing more miserable or stressful than the board meeting. And we're trying to make it fun. So I literally, I, right before I got on this call, we sent cookies to companies prior to their board meetings to Zet companies. And one of the cookies says, uh, I, it says, eat this or whip it at an unproductive board member, right? And a PE company that takes themselves very seriously just sent me a picture of their cookies that we just sent to them. And they signed one of the cookies saying, you know, thanks so much. Oh, cool. A few people on our team like, that's why, you know, we try yeah. and make it fun. So that's, that's what we're trying to do is really build a brand around this transformation. So what, what's next? Are you, as an entrepreneur, are you, what are your thoughts around AI? You know, what's, what's your we're fourth product? Super into it. The, the, so we, we have really pressed AI to be a part of the product and it is, it is actually mind blowing. So it really, the way we describe it is it turns you from an author to an editor. So just for example, we have a, we, we have a monthly all hands for our company and it usually takes everyone on the team, including me, a couple hours to put your section together with AI. It probably took me eight minutes and it was better than anything I could have done myself. So I actually think Zach is a really nice use case for AI because we've built it specifically for executives and it surfaces the information that an executive would care about most. It were, it's, it's really cool. And we're just getting started. That's really cool. I'm a, you know, so I'm a visionary entrepreneur. I'm t I wait till the last minute to do things. And I had a presentation in front of a group of entrepreneurs. If he's listening, I apologize in advance, but I yeah. had to do, and I literally went to Prezi, a presentation yeah. platform and I built my presentation and I want to say like, yeah, five minutes and right. like downloaded my persona to chat, chat GPT and loaded up all the slides. Like, I couldn't believe it. So when I showed my team, yeah. they're like, oh my gosh, you actually did something. And, it, and I'm like, it took me like five minutes That's amazing. and it was really good. Right. They're like, this is actually really good. Yeah. And I'm like thinking about 2009 or 2010, right. like yeah, it would have taken me weeks or like I would have been able to get it done. It's just amazing at how fast things are changing. Yeah, you know, where, we, where we've had to spend a lot of time is on the security. So if you think about board meetings and investor updates, the, if you go and, and we, the backbone of our AI is chat GPT. Uh, but if you put something in chat GPT, it goes out into the universe. So board, you can't use that for board meetings. So we've spent a lot of time on security in order to make the AI secure because that's table stakes at Zach. So a little different than some of the other solutions out there in terms of compliance. So we've been through due diligence hell with our AI, with some of the big companies that use Zach, and it's, we passed all tests. How do you as an entrepreneur and like your success with the last three companies and what you're doing today, like just the workforce in general, like are you, you live in Michigan? Uh, yeah. I'm assuming these companies are, they're not bound to a specific state, but you guys are all over the place, managed teams throughout the country. How do you? what's what do you see today and for the future for employees or like working for your organization like how how drastically different is that from your original days at crowd rise and moose jaw you know what it's 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 definitely different but because we had multiple locations and allowed and also allowed people to work remotely at crowd rise there was in our conference rooms they were at the time there was no zoom there were google hangouts was what it was Every, you couldn't go in where there weren't multiple Google Hangouts happening. So we were sort of used to that kind of world. And obviously being in a room and you could just yell to everybody, hey, come check this out is, is different. But I think we've embraced it pretty nicely. I, I don't know if you all use Slack, yeah. but Slack has become a big part of what we do. And we, and we are relentless about building systems to make it fun. So I'll give you just one example of something we're doing right now. I mean, we have very few rules at our company. And we've had the same rules at all three companies, but one of them is no yawning, okay? And so we're very big on coffee and espresso. So we have a contest right now, and it's to, it's for a, for a fancy espresso machine. And so everyone has entered into a contest, but we pull in, when we pull a name uh, from a randomizer, it's you're out of the contest. Okay. Right. So, so it's great. It's really neat. And so, uh, in a fun way. So on our all hands the other day, you know, it, we, we pulled a couple names and they were out of the contest and we're doing, I don't know if you do the, any of the New York times games like Wordle or, or connection, but we're all doing all doing all that stuff all the time 
for prizes. So we, we try and make it fun. And, and again, very lucky that people on our team worked at Moose Jaw and Crab Rise. So they sort of know how we like to do this. Yeah. I mean, it's not, they know they, they built it along with us. So they, you know, they were on the ground. So is that that, is that a, comp- a complete virtual company? Yeah, we're entirely remote. Oh, wow. No office. How many team members? So we have 23 people on the team right awesome. now and they're everywhere. They're everywhere. So, um, you know, my, what, the, you, you forget about the, the, some of the, some of the stuff you have to deal with as a company that's just not fun. And one of them is getting the tax information from each different state where there are employees. And my brother deals with all that. So I, it gives me great pleasure every, I, I probably have one right here. Yeah. State of Pennsylvania, right. For every time something comes in, uh, to send it to my brother. So he has to deal with it. So he basically, we need, when we have a new hire, he just says, we can't get a new state, right? Yeah. I can't take dealing with yet another state documents. Yeah, no, I hear that. I am definitely not the operation side either. Uh, so I, we, we got, before we go, we got to talk about this, the, the break dancing and the, uh, yeah. Where, where does that come from? Is that your brother? Or? Or we just. We just want to make it, we just want to be crazy and make it fun. I mean, and, and anything to be different, but not take it too far is sort of where we sit. So at Moose Jaw and, and Crowd Rise and, and Zach, in terms of how far we press the brand, we always say, we can talk about French kissing. We can't talk about fucking, right? That's, that's sort of our mindset. Like we, we want it to be fun and foolish, but we don't want to make anybody mad, right? So. Um, but we're doing stuff like that all the time. And we just emailed our customers yesterday, just literally with a movie quote and said, guess the movie for a chance to win a Zek hoodie. Right. And, and we don't even have Zek hoodies. We were literally going to, we were going to make our first Zek hoodie for the winner. And that was part of the messaging. So we just wanted to be fun. Well, well, I love that. That's, you know, here, here you are with a handful of companies, super successful. You're sending stuff out and you're still building I like to use the analogy of like building the plane when it's flying kind of a deal. Like you put the yes, marketing sure. campaign out, you're like, we even have the hoodie. It's like, you're just going for it. That's awesome. That you're, yeah. You, have- you know what? It's interesting. You use that analogy. I think it, when we talk about this at, at Moose Jaw and certainly at the beginning of crowd rise, we were flying the plane and didn't know where it was going to land. Okay. And it's, I think it's really hard to run a company that way. Yeah. yeah. We would just literally go from crisis to crisis. I think we've done a better job creating systems so that at least we have a destination, right? We, 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 we have goals and we know where we want to go and, and we're hell bent on hitting those goals as opposed to just going from project to project, which is really hard. I mean, we do that also, but at least we have, uh, we have more paper goals in mind, which, and then you back into them and figure out, okay, do we have the resources to hit these goals? And if you don't, then let's either get the resources or change the goals. So we really try to not live in fantasy land as we operate the company. Did you pull from like an operating system? Like there's a, there's a ton of them out there. Is there anything that you don't yeah. do from, from an entrepreneurial perspective or not really? Just all our failures. I mean, we literally, we failed at everything. And, and again, lucky to be working with the same group. So we've lived this together. And so it's really, it's, it's really our own system. That is, that is something special. I think like my last company to my new company, like my partner and I are both repartner back and it's kind of nice. Yeah. We see things right or like something's going wrong. We kind of look at each other and laugh just because like we've been down that path. Oh, we get, I mean, our head of sales and, and I were on a call with a normal person, a customer who we didn't know a couple of weeks ago. And we got the giggles on the call it, to the point it was inappropriate. It was like we literally, I, I had to take a post it note and put it over my, his name's Trey, put it over my friend's face on the zoom because i couldn't look at it like that stuff is you know it's great that's awesome so if anybody listening like how what's the process of getting involved with zach i know a million companies right now that i think go through this issue and honestly until i met you i didn't even know that there was a solution that solved this problem like you know thank how do people get in contact with if they want a demo or they want to you know give it a test run because it's a sounds like a really amazing solution for a lot of companies yeah, thanks. I mean, just go to zek.app, Z-E-C-K dot app. You can, you can get on a demo. You probably get one today if you want. Our team is awesome. They're fun. They get, they understand the, the problem uh, and we make it really easy. One of our 
one of our goals is to make the process easy. So it's, you know, I, I'm sure you've purchased a lot of software. Uh, there's nothing more frustrating to me than getting on a call with someone like me and they say, hey, this is, it's unlimited. And, and you get the contract and you find out it's unlimited for three people for the next three weeks. And then they start upselling you like crazy. We're not like that. Uh, again, we're trying to do something very different here. And so ease of use is something that we're pretty relentless about. That's awesome. That no, sounds super exciting. Well, Rob, thank you so much. I know you're a super busy guy. Thank you. Got some idea. You are too. I, I, I want to get out of your way there, but thanks so much for coming on, sharing your wisdom. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate thanks, it. Rob. This has been another episode of Entrepreneur Intel. Thank you for joining us. For show notes or other episodes, please visit us at entrepreneurintel.com. Until next time.